Welcome everyone to another Catch Pro Fitment video. Today we're going to be fitting our Pro Shield motorized shoe blocker. So this is a new product for Catch Pro. Um, it's in two pieces at the moment. We're going to fit it onto this right stander B. This is a 32 model. Um, not a lot of products out there fit these uh, smaller footprint items. So today we're going to show you how to mount this up to replace your standard deflector shield and we can run you through that process. So when you open up your package for your Pro Shield, you'll have the main mounting brackets, which has the motor already installed along with the adapter plate. The actual uh, Pro Shield will come separate because it's a lot easier to mount with this off. Um, you'll have a wiring loom. Now on the stand-ons, well, you've got a choice. You can have a wiring loom with a toggle switch that can be flush mounted. Um, we also have magnetic foot pedals for the sit down mowers for guys that guys or girls that don't want to place them um, the the switch in the panel. We have our bag of hardware. There's not much here. We've got eight mil mounting bolts, and then we have countersunk um, mounting bolts to attach this to this. Um, along with, uh, this is some of the tools that we're going to be needing today. So we've got an eight mil drill bit. We do have a step drill bit. We have some vice clamps here, which you may want to use. Um, they won't be needed in every situation. I've got a little pen to mark some holes. I've just got a standard drill here for, um, I and mean, I've got a five mil drill bit for a pilot hole. I have a 13 mil socket. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver also have a normal screwdriver and we have some spanners here so 13 mil um 10 mil and i do have an 11 mil uh for the battery terminals so now we can get straight into the fitment so the first thing that we're going to want to do is remove the standard deflector shield now these will uh these setups will change um amongst all the different mowers but we'll start first by removing this Okay, now also remember everyone to probably keep these parts on hand. If you ever want to sell the mower or move on, you're able to sell it back um, in its original state. Now for this step, we want to mount the main brackets. Now you'll notice um, we have two different variants of the Pro Shield. One variant will actually have this lip folded into the brackets, which means you can run a Catch Pro grass catcher. Um, or some other brands of, of grass catchers. And because the, the 32s are a very compact unit, um, we've decided to, to build this in so that you don't have to cut or notch things later on. So when you are determining the positioning of the Pro Shield brackets, what you'll want to keep in mind is that with this particular unit and some others, you will want to line up these holes flush with the edge of this deck because that's going to determine where your grass catcher will fit. Um, you can see here we've got plenty of room for the clearance of this uh, motor. This motor on various models can actually be tilted a little, a little bit backwards which will give you a little bit more lift on the actual shield which you'll see later on. Um, for this fitment, we're going to keep the motor here as we don't have a lot of clearance. So from this point, we want to determine this and, um, this is pretty much the area that it will go. So now we're going to get our vice clamps and we're going to clamp that down so we can mark our holes. So we have the placement, um, Correct, now, if you're not um, confident that you know the unit will stay, you can use a pair of vice clamps to clamp this down. If you need um, this removed, you can just remove it. It's two 13 mil uh, bolts that you can remove. At the moment, 
because um, this is a, a fairly easy fitment, I'm confident of where I can mark my holes. So I can now mark these holes and get ready to start drilling the unit in. So I have my holes marked. I've got a five mil drill bit in there as a pilot hole. I do also have a step drill bit just to make it a little easier. And I've got an eight mil bit that I'll run through. So we can go ahead and uh, get our first holes in. Now I like to clean the deck off a little bit as I go, um, just to keep things nice and clean. So from this point the holes are drilled and we can go ahead and start mounting. With our hardware we can now get this installed. I like running the bolts up through the deck and we can just get these finger tight for now and can stay there. You can tighten this down now. Um, we might actually do that. So now we're going to take a look at our placement of where we want our switch. Um, I'm right handed. I think on this machine, I probably want to put the switch right here which would mean when I'm operating, I can be moving forward. If I want to um, operate this chute, I can use my left hand to just um, open and close that and engage the switch. So we can take the little booty off and we're gonna be required to put a 13 mil hole wherever you want this placement and then we can run the switch up through. So we can go ahead now and get quickly, um, even though there was nothing directly underneath. Um, I do have an obstruction underneath which is not allowing me to get the full length of this in flush. Um, so I've had to move the hole over. Um, so definitely be careful of this. So I've got my toggle switch in here now, just remembering that I did make a mistake with this hole. So the wiring loom is still not set yet, um, but we can go ahead now and get the placement of our shield. And once we do that, we can tidy up the loom and get it all set. Okay, so now with our shield in the closed position, which you can now operate with the switch because we're connected up, um, it's time to have a look at our shield positioning. Now, there will be, there's a few different variables um, depending on the types of mullers, but um, ultimately you just want coverage. 
um, and then the right height. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look. It's going to be connected on these bottom holes. And as you can see, we're going to be a little bit low. Um, ultimately, we want to have this up here. So what we're going to do is we can lift this bracket up. So we might go through and do this. Do this now. To get our positioning. So I think we probably want this up here. Perfect. Now, I'll give you a heads up. You can open this and install your shield directly on. Um, what I've found is it's a little bit tedious being connected and everything. So what I actually like to do is I like to remove this plate, remembering where it's got to go back, and install it on the shield um, when it's off the mower. And what you can actually do is you can have a look at your placement and you can say, okay, I want to use this hole. Um, so we can just put a little tick there and then we can go ahead and remove this again. is removed we can go ahead and install this shield now you want to install the adapter plate on top and the reason being is so that you can get a nice flush close so I believe I was on these holes I can see from my mark so we can run this one up through and just get it finger tight for now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drive this up with the impact driver, but then come back and tighten it up manually because you want to get this nice and tight so it doesn't move. And at the same time, you don't want to strip your screws. That's good. So that's in place, but see how we've got movement? We just need to go tighter. Get that nice and firm so that we don't have any more movement. Pretty good. Okay, let's install the shield and see how we went. So remembering I was in the third set of holes and it looks like it's going to be perfect.
Okay, so you can see here, we're now flush at the bottom. Um, everything is installed. We still do have to do finish the wiring loom. Now, what I will tell you is that you can later on go ahead and trim this. What can happen and what I can see might happen is sometimes this piece can foul out on something back here, which will actually, um, it will uh, determine the amount of um, opening that you have. We're gonna go ahead and check this now and have a look. Okay, so we've got a pretty good lift here. What I can see is in this case, this bracket is in fact touching something back here. We wouldn't have been able to go up much further, but I think it would be much easier to trim that piece down. Um, so once again, with our switch, down and up. Okay, so now we have our uh, wiring run. Now, I found it a little challenging to film while I did this, but essentially the, the main things to remember is to give yourself enough slack to move the deck up and down. So we've got some slack here. Now, remembering you've got your switch here so that you can um, unplug at any time. So we've just got this along the frame. Nothing, um, nothing can get pinched in here. We do have it on this line here, and then we have it bundled up here. Now, going around to the battery box, um, the lead splits, and we have that just bundled up here. Now, um, what I would have loved is I would have loved to have run my wires through this sneaky little hole, but couldn't get the fuse box through. Um, so what I've done is I've actually wound them out the back and I can go ahead and reinstall this. Um, so this is the Pro Shield fitment. Also remembering that this section may or can be trimmed down uh, depending on the user. Um, so I'll go ahead and close this now. And this is the finished product. Now, I do want to run, um, you know, now that we're finished, what I want to do is run through some of the benefits of running a shoot blocker, whether it's powered or not. Um, this is going to allow you to be safer um, while mowing. If you are around um, any obstacles, whether it's people, animals, um, objects, you're able to close this chute down and not have your clippings being thrown everywhere. Um, now this isn't a mulch kit, but if you're mulching like, if you are mowing tons and tons of leaves um, or, a, or a really well maintained lawn, this will give you a mulch effect. Um, if you're running a catch pro or any other sort of bagging system, you do have the option when you get into thicker conditions, you can put this chute down, get some of the density out of it, and then uh, put your bagger on later on to vacuum up um, and leave a nice clean finished. Um, so anyway, um, these will be available on the website. You will be able to select your model. If you do not see your fitment, um, email in through the Catch Pro website. Um, we are adding new fitments daily. so. Um, keep an eye out for that and thank you for joining me.